Hello, I'm Anne Kerr. Welcome to my art studio. I get asked all the time about the colours I use in my watercolour paintings. Now there is no definitive list of colours, but as I've been asked, I'll give you the list of colours that I use and I'll let you know some of the favourite mixes that I use in my landscape paintings. Now a bit later in the video, I'll also show you some special characteristics about one of those colours and I'll also do a little test on two watercolour papers that I think might surprise you. So, are you ready? Choosing colours is a very personal thing and it depends whether you're painting landscapes, flowers, portraits, animals, still life. Whatever it is that you're painting, you will have a different palette, a different colour palette for the different topics. I'm basically a landscape and floral painter, so my colours are geared towards that. I know a lot of people do landscapes and a lot of people do flower painting, so I'm going to give you an idea of the colours that I've got in my palette and how I do some of my favourite mixes. Now there is one colour that I use that's got rather a magical um, characteristic to it and I'll show you that. So here we go. Now I'd like to show you my palette. This is the one I use in the studio all the time. And as you can see, there are lots and lots of colours in here. Well, I always think of a painting palette as a bit like your wardrobe. In your wardrobe, you will have things that you don't wear very often, but they come out on special occasions. Well, it's the, it's the same with my painting palette. I've got my regular colours that I use all the time, but I've also got special colours that only come out on special occasions. So I'll give you an idea of the basic palette that I use. And I've put some colours out for you here. Now my basic palette, I've got a warm and a cool of the um, primary colours and I've got one in the middle. And I've got a couple of earth colours and here are my two special colours that come out on special occasions that I use. So I'll just run through these. I'll also put them up on the screen for you. And I'll put a list at the end of the, um, of the video in the comments down below so you can copy them down if you want to. So my, uh, my basic palette is ultramarine blue for my warm blue and um, cerulean blue for my cool blue and my one in the middle is cobalt. And then down to the reds I've got Pyrrhal Scarlet and I've got Pyrrhal Crimson as my cool one and then I've got light red in the middle. And for my warm yellow I've got raw sienna. For my cool, lemma, my cool yellow I've got lemon yellow. And my one in the middle, my neutral one, is Hansa Yellow Medium. And for my earth colours I've got burnt sienna and burnt umber and for my special occasion ones I've got a beautiful colour that's made by Daniel Smith called Moon Glow and I've also got Naples Yellow. Now Naples Yellow has got a special characteristic about it that I will tell you a little later on. Now you may have noticed when I did these swatches of colour that I had problems making the colour run. Well, I'll tell you why. In my studio, I've got lots and lots of bits of scrap paper that people have given me, watercolour paper. So I just picked up one to do the little swatches with. Well, I have to admit that I would never, ever have used this for painting a picture. This is cellulose paper. And I cannot, cannot get the colours to run on it. Look, there's hard lines here. It's just not moving at all. 
I'll do it again in a moment so you can see that I wasn't actually cheating when I did that. I could not get the colour to run. The colour went straight down into the paper and there it stayed. So this is not a paper that I would recommend if you're, especially if you're a beginner, if you're a beginner you should be using the best quality materials that you can possibly afford. Because starting off with paper like this you will be tearing your hair out. So I'm sorry people that make cellulose paper, I don't like it. So let's have a look at the uh, let's have a look at some of the color mixes that I use in my landscape paintings. So we'll put this to one side and we'll get a proper piece of paper. Now this is 100% cotton paper, which is what I use all the time. Okay. So we'll start off with probably the most important thing if you're doing landscape painting is your sky especially if you have a low horizon, you're going to have a big sky. Now, one of the loveliest colours to use in your sky is cobalt blue. And you can add a little bit of the crimson to your cobalt blue. Whoops, let's have the right one. A little bit of the pearl crimson and that's the difference it makes. It just calms down that blue just a little bit and brings in that little bit of a little bit of a pinky shade to it. So that's one of the colours I use all the time for my skies. I could add a little bit of burnt sienna. And that little bit of burnt sienna just makes it slightly more uh, stormy, if you like, a little bit more um, cool, stormy, sort of grey skies, like most of the skies you get in England. <laughs> so that would be a lovely colour for that. Now those colours can also, also be used wonderfully for the shadows in your clouds. And there again, those are often the mixtures I use for the shadows in my clouds. Now another lovely colour that you can use for skies is cerulean blue or manganese blue. They're both very, very similar. So cerulean blue and you could actually add a little bit of light red to your um, cerulean blue. Let's do that. Let's pick up my light red. Put a bit more cerulean blue in there. And there again that just darkens it and quiets, uh, quiet, it darkens it and quietens, you know what I mean. <laughs> We get muddled up with our words sometimes and I'm not going to edit that out, I think it's funny. <laughs> now, ultramarine blue, if you remember on my chart I had ultramarine blue as my warm blue. Well, that's quite a fierce blue. And I think if I use that in my skies, it would be incredibly bright. Let's make it a bit stronger. Now, I don't think that's particularly a natural colour for skies. But what I could do is I could add, again, a little bit of my light red. And quieten it. I'm not going to use that word anymore. Calm it down a little. <laughs> And of course you could, you could dilute that and make it much lighter. So that again would be a, a beautiful sky colour. I think ultramarine on its own is a little bit harsh. So there is a lovely range of blues that you can use for your skies. Now I live in Spain and I would be painting my skies with a mixture of cobalt blue and cerulean blue. 
We very rarely have grey skies out here. So these skies in the Mediterranean, uh, these are the colours I would use. But you've got to think about where you are and how the sky colour actually fits in with the surroundings that you're living in. So let's go on now and look at the colour that many people have a lot of problems with, which is green when they're painting grasses and trees and things like that. So I'll do a light green, I'll do a mid green and I'll do a dark green. Now for my light green, I use a mixture of Hansa yellow medium and cobalt blue. Now when you're mixing colours, always put your lightest colour in your palette first and add the darkest. If you do it the other way round, you will be using up all your light colour, trying to lighten the dark colour. So always put the light colour in first. So a little bit of a little bit of cobalt into that. And that's my lovely spring green. So Hansa yellow medium and cobalt blue. Now for the mid green, I do exactly the same thing, but I add a little bit of burnt sienna to it. So let's use the mix we've got already and just add that little bit of burnt sienna. Hansa yellow medium, cobalt blue and burnt sienna. And there's my mid green. It's a lovely olive, olive green. Now for my dark green, I use my Hansa yellow medium, but this time I use ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. There it comes. Yeah. And there's my dark green. So a lovely spring green, a sort of um, olivey green in the middle and my lovely deep dark green. What makes that dark is using ultramarine blue. Ultramarine blue and, and the um, burnt sienna will make a lovely dark colour on its own. Add the yellow and you've got a beautiful, beautiful dark green. Now if I'm doing autumn foliage, I would use a mixture of raw sienna. Whoops, used to be a little bit. I should have sprayed these paints before I started today. If you squirt them with a, a water spray bottle, just squirt your paints. It just loosens them up. So raw sienna and burnt sienna. Raw sienna and burnt sienna. So that makes a lovely autumny orange. Now for my mid colour, I'm going to use Hansa yellow because it's brighter and some Pyrrhal scarlet. could be pyrrhal scarlet. I never know whether it's pyrrhal scarlet or pyrrhal scarlet. It doesn't matter. Well, it does matter, but you know. There we go. It's a lovely, lovely mid-orange. And for the dark one, I'll use raw sienna. my Pyrrhal Scarlet, Pyrrhal Scarlet, and back to my lovely Burnt Sienna. There we go. 
and you've got three beautiful colours to use on your autumn trees. So the next thing we look at is painting things like um, buildings or rocks, um, walls, fences, things like that. So one of the most beautiful colours that you can use for anything like that is raw sienna. It's such a useful colour, it really, really is. Now also, if you mix up raw sienna with cobalt blue, a little bit more raw sienna, with a tiny little bit, um, tiny little bit of burnt umber. Not burnt sienna this time, but burnt umber. That is a beautiful colour if you're doing buildings or rocks or fences or something along those lines. Now if you want something really dark then ultramarine and burnt sienna. A good old favourite mix this for any sort of, any sort of darks anywhere. Ultramarine and burnt sienna. Beautiful dark grey. And you can, you can bend that towards the blue by adding more ultramarine and you can bend it towards the red by adding a bit more burnt sienna. Cobalt blue and burnt sienna. make a very different grey. Very, very different to that one, especially when it dries. So there again for rocks and buildings and fences and things like that, a lovely mixture for that. Another one you can do, which I'm, I'm actually very fond of, I'm running out of space here, is raw sienna and light red. Raw sienna and light red. Lovely for buildings. Now if I'm doing the roof, red tiles on a roof, then I absolutely love light red. Light red is quite a unique colour. Yes, you can make this colour by mixing it up, but I just like to have it in my box. It's just lovely to dip into, especially for roofs, tiles on roofs. Now if you're doing something like a seascape, then obviously cerulean blue, or if you've got manganese blue, which is very similar, is a gorgeous colour to use for that. There's your cerulean blue. And if you mix it with a little cobalt blue, just to quieten it down a little, then you've got some lovely mixtures here for, for sea colours. And of course you can add your yellows and things to it as well. Whoops, that's a bit sharp. That's better. And then you've got your lovely sort of sea greens. Now, one little tip for you, <coughs> excuse me. When you're painting skies, whatever the blue is that you use in your sky, try and use that blue throughout your painting. Because it'll give a harmony to your painting if you're using the same blue all the way through. Yes, of course you can use other blues in the rest of your painting. There's nothing to stop you using every blue in your box if you want to. But the more that you can use the one that's in your sky, the more it will bring your painting together with a beautiful harmony. Now, I said at the beginning that I would, I would mention, oh, this awful paper again. <laughs> I would mention something special about Naples Yellow. 
<clears throat> now, Naples yellow is a very opaque colour, and that's why I keep it on its own here, as is lemon yellow in some brands of paint, not all, but some brands of paint, it's quite opaque. But Naples yellow is nearly always fairly opaque. So I sort of keep it there to remind myself just to keep it away from the rest of my paints. By the way, that's why I don't have any of the cadmiums in my box. Because cadmium orange, cadmium red and cadmium yellow are all opaque colours. And I like transparent colours in my paint box, so I keep right away from the cadmiums. There are masses of other colours exactly like the, the um, cadmiums to look at, and they're the ones that I choose. So that's why I don't use cadmium yellow and, and cadmium red. But, you know, as I've always said, it's a personal choice. There are no rights and wrongs. Let's have a look at this Naples yellow. Now this is, I'll just move that up a bit, this is the magical thing about Naples yellow. If you've got a sky and you've, you've, you've put in some Naples yellow at the bottom of your sky and you want to put some blue at the top of your sky, let's have, let's have some cobalt. Now when these two colours meet, you would imagine that yellow and blue will make green. Well, Naples yellow is not a particularly good mixer. So look, my blue and my yellow are still blue and yellow. So Naples yellow is a lovely colour to use in the sky if you're putting it right next to blue because it doesn't mix very well and it's not going to turn bright green. Now having said that, this is a Windsor & Newton Naples yellow. I've tried other Naples yellows from other brands of paint and they don't react like this. They turn green very quickly. But this particular Naples yellow is an absolute gem. So that's why I keep Naples yellow in my box. I very rarely use it for anything else because it's opaque and I'm not keen on opaque colours. Some people love them, um, but they're not for me. So can, can you see there how you really haven't got any green? So it's quite magical. Now one of the special colours I keep in my paint box is called Moon Glow and it's made by Daniel Smith. So let me show you the characteristics of Moon Glow. Now here's a piece of proper watercolour paper. Hint, hint. <laughs> right, Moon Glow. There's a bit of space left on my palette up here. When you're mixing up, um, you know, when you're doing swatches and mixing up paints and things, don't use your good paint brushes. I always keep an old brush for doing things like this. You're scrubbing around in your paint box. You're gradually wearing the bristles away. So if you if you're just doing little practices, then use an old paint box, an old paint brush. Now this is Moon Glow. Now if I water that down. You can see how this would work beautifully for things like stormy skies, clouds, um, shadows. In fact, what we could do is, if I bring this piece back, which is where we did all our colours, which is now dry, and I'll use a bigger brush and I'll Can you see how that can be used for shadows? It's a lovely purpley grey colour and it's completely transparent. So if you put it over a colour like that, look, it makes a lovely, lovely shadow. Let's try it on another one. Let's try it on this one. Look at that. But here I've mixed it with my Hansa Yellow Medium. 
and look. Beautiful olive green. Now if I mix it with my raw sienna, and remember when you're mixing colours, put your light colour in the paint box first and add the darker one. So raw sienna and moon glow is going to give you raw umber, which is a sort of a greenish brown. And here's raw umber. How lovely is that? Now let's put the little colour chart to one side for a moment and let's come back to my original swatches of, of colour. I'm just moving that on the camera. That's it. Now I want to go back to this one, which is my Pyrrhal Red. Just to prove to you that I didn't cheat when I did that. Right. Here's my Pyrrhal Scarlet. I'm going to... I'm going to paint another one of these next to it. And then I'm going to get some water. I'm going to try and move it. Look, I cannot move it. Look. <laughs> I'll put some more water on. Look, my brush is dripping. I cannot move that paint. Now, how can you possibly paint a watercolour painting on a paper that won't let you move the paint. Let's try this one. I was actually shocked when I used The reason I've got this paper is a friend of mine was moving out of their house and they had a lot of spare bits of watercolour paper and they gave it to me saying, oh, this would be useful for you, and, uh, which is great. And I tried it out and... Uh, well, <laughs> hmm. so here we go again. This is pearl crimson, and I'll get some water, clean water. Look, I cannot move it. My brush is dripping. There is so much water there. I cannot move that paint. Now this is a piece of 100% cotton paper and I'll show you the difference. Go back to my... Let's put this one next to there. Oh, this is what watercolour paper should do. That's what watercolour paper should do. Look at this. You cannot do it. Let's do the same thing with this. Let's turn it around this way. Let's get some of this. Put it on there, next to that. It's got a little bit of... I don't know what that is. Dead fly, I think. <laughs> Let's put that on there. Get some water. And move it. Look, this is what this is what watercolour paper should do. Should be able to move it all over the place. So this is cellulose paper, and this is one hundred percent cotton paper. Now, if that doesn't convince people to use good quality paper, then I don't know what will. <laughs> I hope that's been a little bit of help to, to guide you through this huge variety of colours that there are out there and to help you maybe to, to make a choice that's um, not too big. Paintings done with one, two, three or even just four colours have a beautiful harmony about them. So have a go at doing some paintings and restricting yourself to maybe, maybe four colours and have a go at mixing them up. If you found this video useful and you'd like some more videos like this, then please consider clicking that subscribe button and the little bell icon, because that will let you know when I upload another video for you. If you've enjoyed this one, then give it a thumbs up. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Now remember, there is an artist in everyone. Goodbye for now.